Hey guys, welcome back to Musty YT. If you haven't already, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about my experience on the 75 Hard program. And maybe it will inspire you to want to try the program yourself, or maybe you had another program in mind that you were interested in. But either way, I, can, I hope I can provide you guys a few useful tips and maybe some motivation as well as some inspiration. So what is 75 hard? When I get asked that question, my immediate response is that it's a mental toughness challenge. Now, many people are gonna look at the rules, especially the two workouts per day, the one gallon of water, and they're gonna think that it's a fitness or a weight loss program. And you should definitely lose some weight if you're doing everything correctly, but it's much more than that. And I would absolutely call this a mental toughness challenge. 75 Hard was developed by a gentleman named Andy Frisilla. And Andy Frisilla, what I like about him is that he talks the talk and he walks the walk. He was not born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He built all his businesses on his own from the ground up. One of the most successful being his uh, sports supplement line, First Form. And he is also a podcaster. He has one of the number one business podcasts on both iTunes and Spotify. It's called Real AF with Andy Frisilla. I would definitely recommend you check it out if you need some motivation. So you might be wondering, how do I know all this? If you decide to do the program, I would highly recommend that you purchase the book. And in the book, you're gonna get a short biography of who Andy is and why you should listen to him. And he's also going to provide a week by week breakdown of the program and what you can expect from week to week. I found this to be very helpful and very motivating and definitely recommend you pick it up. I think it was less than $20 if I'm not mistaken. When I read this book, the chapter that really got to me was chapter 11. And in chapter 11, Andy talks about the voices we have in our head. And we all have these voices in our heads. But he refers to two specific voices, the boss voice and the bitch voice. Every day there is an epic battle going on inside of you. It's the battle between two voices in your head. I call them the boss voice and the bitch voice. The boss voice is the one that speaks to us of our potential for greatness. It's the voice that drives us to better ourselves, to become the best we can possibly be. It will bark at you to stop whining, stop making excuses, get off your ass and get to work. The problem is, most people don't listen to their boss voice. They listen to the other voice, the bitch voice. The bitch voice is the one who originates every negative word that enters the human mind and goes out into human society. It's the voice that practically trademarked phrases like, not now, maybe tomorrow, you can't, you shouldn't, who do you think you are, how dare you. The bitch voice is the mastermind behind every mindset or movement that makes every possible excuse for why a person can't become what they really want to become and do anything that they want to do. You come from a shitty family. You were born into a lower economic class. You're a woman in a man's world. You're a minority in a white culture. You weren't born with the right genetics. You aren't educated enough. Those are terrible words and phrases, aren't they? But let's be honest, you've heard those exact phrases in your head, and if you're like most people, you've not only heard them, you've obeyed them. We all have these voices in our heads, and they mess with us. And after reading that chapter, I became more aware of the voices in my head. And it was just like, shut up. Please just let me do what I need to do. And at that point, the boss voice became a little stronger because I was tired of this bitch voice telling me all these negative things. And I felt as if that just by doing the program, I switched, I flipped the switch. You know, the, the light, the switch had been flipped, but the dimmer was on. And when I read this chapter, the dimmer was flipped on as well, 
everything was illuminated. I became aware of those voices in my head and now the battle was with the voices. And the whole phrase, you versus you, took on a whole new meaning for me. And I could not wait to beat down these voices. I could not wait every morning to give them the double middle fingers. So take control of those voices in your head. Now let's get into the rules. And I'll go over each one individually to give you some tips and pointers that help me get through. So number one, you got two workouts a day, one has to be outside and they have to be 45 minutes each. You have 10 pages of reading to complete, a gallon of water to drink, you must follow a diet with no cheat meals or alcohol, and you have to take a progress picture. All of these tasks must be completed daily. The first task that you complete two 45 minute workouts, for me, that required better time management, hands down. Before I used to get up at around 6.37, you know, use the bathroom, get cleaned up, have breakfast, start your day. But for me to be able to complete all these tasks, my wake up time was the first thing that had to change. So my wake up time went from 6.30, usually seven to five. And that for me was the hardest challenge. The workout, I mean, don't get me wrong, working out is hard, but waking up for me was 10 times harder. And having to face the cold weather outside, that one was also very challenging for me because I do not like the cold and I naturally run cold anyway. So getting up early and knowing that I had to run or walk in the cold was very daunting for me at times. And if I'm being completely honest, there were times I cried because I, I just didn't want to do it and I was tired and I was sore, but I just didn't want to fail. And I don't know how that switch got flipped, but it got flipped. And even though I was like mad and sad, I was determined. So for 75 days, let's go. So my morning routine, when I began the program, I started at 5 a.m., wake up, bathroom, coffee. By 5.30, I start my reading. I've got 10 pages worth of reading. By 5.50, make the bed, clean up, get dressed, and I usually listen to local news in the background while I would do that. By 6.15, I would begin my walk, and by 7 a.m., I was done. As soon as I got home, I would always do my best to drink at least two bottles of water because that task many times got away from me. So if I didn't start immediately after my workout, many times at the end of the day, I had a lot of water left over that I had to drink. Um, by 7 a.m., 7 to 8, I'm having breakfast, uh, time with family. By 8 a.m., I walk the dog. 8.15, take the progress pic right before the shower, and at 9 a.m. my workday would begin. By the time my workday began, I had already completed three tasks, and I was working on the fourth. So that was very motivating. Like I had already accomplished so much before anybody had even started their day, and that for me was a big sense of pride. So that helped to silence, or not silence, lessen the volume of that bitch voice. Now, when it came to the reading, I had to do the reading in the morning. I'm not a night reader. Reading at night makes me sleepy and I find it hard to concentrate and I find that I don't absorb what I've read. So for me, I did my reading in the morning, but please do whatever is going to allow you to be successful. If you're a morning reader, do it in the morning. If you prefer reading at night, feel as if maybe it gets you know loaded into that subconscious while you sleep, <coughs> excuse me, then please do that. But again, do what's going to allow you to be successful. Now, depending upon the rest of my day, my second workout, sometimes I'd go to the gym, sometimes I would just work out in my garage, and I do have a pretty decent amount of equipment in there, so I, I feel pretty blessed in that regard. Um, but again, the the challenging part of the workout for me was not was not the not the workout. It was waking up earlier, not having cheat meals, and drinking that gallon of water. Um, not having cheat meals for me was very hard for two reasons. Um, number one, I like to eat out. Whether if that's a sit down place, if that is takeout, I just really enjoy eating out. 
And then number two, the convenience of it. It was very convenient to just pick up something after my workout and go home and eat. So again, that's more time management and more discipline. And if there was something that I wanted that I was craving, then I'd just come home and try to make an at-home version of whatever it was that I was craving. The part that I anticipated being hard, that was not hard, was skipping dessert and, and cheat meals in that regard, like sweets. So I like pastries, I like ice cream, I like candy. Um, I like sweet things, but that was not a problem for me because of the amount of water I was drinking. There was so much water that had to be consumed that after dinner, I'm so full from the food that I've consumed and the water that I have to drink that the the sweet cravings just seemed to go away. And that, that was not challenging at all. But finishing that gallon of water, that was very challenging for me. And I tried everything to do my best to get it down. I bought myself a nice bottle, had this beautiful straw in it, but I just, I found out that I don't like sipping through a straw. It actually takes a decent amount of effort, especially if it's a long straw. I just prefer throwing it down and let gravity do its thing. So I ended up resorting just back to my regular gallon here, and then I will fill up the 16 ounce bottle throughout the day. But the water for me was a very challenging aspect of the program. For some people, I know it's not gonna be a challenge. For some people, I've seen people that drink water all day long. It's just not something that I used to do. So that for me was very hard. Um, the aspects of the program that I found easiest, no alcohol, take a progress pick, 10 pages worth of reading. Those for me were not the challenge. The aspects of the program I found most difficult were getting up earlier, drinking a gallon of water and not eating out. When it comes to the workout, if you find that to be challenging, remember that this program is scalable. So not everybody's gonna start off at the same level of fitness. And if you can walk, walk. If you can run, run. If you sprint, sprint. If you wanna lift weights, lift weights. My only piece of advice is don't be complacent with your workout and don't allow it to be too easy. This should be a little bit of a challenge. We do want to make progress and see results here. You don't have to kill yourself, but don't make it so easy that you become lackadaisical about it. Be intentional about your workout. And I think that pretty much covers it for all the tasks. And now I have a couple of behind the scenes slash unexpected results that I experienced when completing this program. And I'm gonna start with behind the scenes. So in the book, chapter 18, Andy talks about how in the beginning, people are excited to start the program. You know, how can you not be excited? You're like, I'm gonna do this. And I felt that way too. I'm gonna conquer this. But then exhaustion sets in. You're going to experience a certain level of culture shock and it will be so unlike what you have experienced in yourself and your life that you might find yourself disorientated and unnerved. That's when you're going to face the temptation to give up. A lot of people say that happens around day eight. And exactly on day eight, that happened to me. I was exhausted. I'm not used to this. And somebody had asked me to do something that I was supposed to do. And I snapped because I was tired, beyond tired. And I did it because I've already decided that I'm gonna do my personal tasks plus this. So it was almost out of like spite that I did it, but I did. And when I was done, I was happy I did it and I felt like a big jerk. So in that moment, I resolved to the fact that I need to have a better attitude about this program, that nobody's forcing me to do this. And it's not fair to take out my exhaustion on the people that are around me. And the people that are, are around me are people that I love. So I don't want to do that. So in that moment, I resolved that even though I felt overwhelmed, I needed to have more emotional control. And as you exercise that mental muscle and you start to silence that bitch voice, you will have more mental control. 
and I'm not perfect. I'm still not perfect. Nobody will be or ever will be, but I'm a lot better. I'm a lot better. And I try to approach things with a better attitude now, even if I am tired or frustrated or whatever. So last but not least, and this was a side effect that I never expected. And I can only guess that it's because I am becoming mentally stronger. I stopped biting my nails and I've been a nail biter my whole life. I used to joke that I didn't remember being alive and not being a nail biter. And even though I would joke about it, I hated that characteristic about myself. I thought it was embarrassing. I thought it was disgusting. I thought it showed a lack of self-control. And when I would see other people do it, it would make me feel even more embarrassed and I would question myself, you know, do, is that what I look like? So I don't know what it was, but one day, just cold turkey, February 14th, Valentine's Day, I just stopped. And I became obsessed with figuring out how can I stop this and what can I do to make them grow? So I cleaned up my cuticles, I buffed my nails, I did everything, oiled them on a daily basis. And then after a month, when I felt like I had things under control, I went and got my nails done. And these are fakes, but my real nails are growing so fast underneath here that I can't wait to get the fakes taken off and just rock my own real nails. And that, I never expected that. I thought I was going to be a nail biter my whole life. But something about being mentally stronger, you become more mindful of everything. And this was something I became very mindful of. And I'm so proud that I get to look at my hands and see pretty hands because I'm the sort of person that pays attention to detail. Details matter to me. And this was a detail that for so long I just let go. And I don't know why. But I'm happy that I overcame that. So that was a really nice side effect. And I think that's about it, guys. I think that really kind of wraps up all my general experiences on this program. And I want to end with a, a paragraph that I'm going to read to you because I don't want to miss anything. And um, I hope this helps you guys. You know, it's called 75 hard for a reason. It's hard. But I feel like it's one of the best things I've ever done for myself. As an athlete, I know what it's like to work on the physical muscles, but we also need to pay attention to our mental muscle. And if we want that muscle to get stronger, we have to work it. And work is not easy, and it is definitely exhausting. But through doing the work, your mind becomes stronger. And as your mind becomes stronger, you have more confidence in yourself, and you trust yourself more. And that has been the most massive reward for me. So guys, that's about it for 75 Hard. If you have any questions about the program, want to know anything about my experience or, you know, have a curiosity of your own, just go ahead and leave your comments or your questions in the comments box below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I encourage you guys to work on yourselves, do the best that you can do. And I think that's really about it. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys next Thursday for another episode of Must See. YT. Peace.